Welcome to this Wise Owl Answers video. This question came in on a video which explains how to save attachments from emails stored in an Outlook folder. And what Chris wanted to know was, is it possible to do the same thing when your emails are stored in a Windows folder rather than an Outlook one? And it certainly is possible to do that. So let's take a look and see how it works. To get started, I've created a new Excel workbook, saved it as a macro enabled file, and then in the Visual Basic Editor, created a new module and started a simple subroutine. I've got this file stored in the same folder as a couple of subfolders as well. So there's one there called Attachments, which is currently empty, but that's where we'll end up saving the attachments later. And then the other folder called Emails already has some message files stored in it, and each one of these has at least one attachment. I'll let you provide the emails and the attachment to yourself for this example. All I'm going to do to start with is write some code to get the name of the first file in that folder. So to help with that, back in the Visual Basic Editor, I'm going to declare a couple of variables. I'm going to call the first one email folder path as string. And then the next one will be email file name as string. I'll eventually spell that correctly. I'm going to store a path in the email folder path variable. So let's say email folder path equals, and then I want to refer to this workbooks path and then concatenate to the end of that backslash emails backslash. What I can then do is try to get the name of the first file in that folder. And I want to do that using the directory function or the DIR function and store the result in the email file name variable. So I can say email file name equals DIR and then open some round brackets. And I could just pass in the email folder path variable. And in fact, if I do that and then say debug.print so that I can print out the name of that file, email file name. When I run the subroutine, it gets the name of the first file in that folder. Now, that folder could contain lots of other file types rather than just MSG files. So to make sure we're limiting this list to only MSG files, we could add a wildcard search pattern to the end of our email folder path. So in the directory function or the DIR function, we can concatenate in some double quotes an asterisk dot MSG. And then if we run the subroutine again, that will return exactly the same end result. Next, I'd like to do the same thing for all of the other files in the folder with the MSG extension. So to do that, I'm going to wrap a loop around my debug.print statement. So let's start the loop by writing the word do, and then I'm just going to indent the debug.print statement. And then a couple of lines further down, I'm going to write the word loop. And then I'm going to add a condition to the loop line, loop until the email file name variable equals an empty string. Now, to make sure that the email file name variable does eventually return an empty string or contain an empty string, I want to try to use the dir function again to get the next file name in the same folder. So I'm going to, just before I loop, I'm going to say email file name equals, and then call the dir function again without passing any arguments to it. So if you don't pass any arguments to the dir function, it will use the initial settings here. So if I just clear the contents of the immediate window and then I could step through this subroutine using the F8 key, just so you can see that the loop does go round and you can see that it's retrieving the next file name and the next file name. And then this time when we hit F8 again, there are no more files with a .msg extension. So the email file name variable contains an empty string. So the loop ends and then so does the subroutine. Now it is possible when we first begin running this code that there are no files in that folder with an MSG extension. And if that was the case, the DIR function would return an empty string initially. It would therefore be pointless going into this loop to do whatever we're about to do. So let's add a little if statement just before the do until loop. If email file name equals an empty string, when we first try to capture a file, we can then say exit sub because it would be pointless entering the loop and repeating these instructions. Next, I'd like to use each of these files to create a new email object using the file as a template. And to do that, we're going to use Microsoft Outlook. 
I want to make sure I get as much help as possible from the IntelliSense when I write this next set of code. So I've already set a reference to the Microsoft Outlook object library. If I head to the Tools menu and choose References, we'll see that I've set a reference to Microsoft Outlook 16.0 object library. So once I've done that, it means I can declare variables from the Outlook library. So let's start by declaring a variable to hold a reference to an instance of the Microsoft Outlook application. So I'll say dim olk as outlook.application. I'd also like a variable to hold a reference to the new mail item that we'll create. So let's say dim mi as outlook.mail item. Once I've established that I've found at least one file with a message extension, before we begin looping, I'm going to say set olk equals new outlook.application. And then inside the loop, after I've printed out the email file name, I'm going to say set mi to be equal to olk dot create item from template. And we're going to use the file that we found to provide the template for the new email. If I open up some round brackets there, you'll see that I need to pass in a template path. So this can't just be the file name. It needs to be the combination of the folder path and the file name. So let's concatenate those two variables together. So email folder path and email file name. So that will generate the new mail item object. Now, if you wanted to see the email appear on screen, you could then say mi.display just to check that your code is working, but it's absolutely not necessary to do that. So I'm not going to bother displaying my mail item object. Somewhere in here, we're going to save the attachments and we'll get to that in just a moment. So let me just add a quick comment to save attachments. And then once we finish with that mail item object, we'll want to close it and not bother saving any changes. So I'm going to say mi.close and then provide the ol discard constant to say don't bother saving any changes. So I appreciate we won't really see anything exciting happen here. But if I just comment out the debug.print statement to avoid cluttering up the immediate window and then run the subroutine again, we'll hopefully see that at least we get no failures. So that's a good sign. Next, I'd like to add the code that will loop through the attachments collection of each email object we're creating. So to help with that, let's declare another variable from the Outlook library. I'm going to say dim at as outlook.attachment. And looping through the attachments collection is fairly straightforward. So just below this comment where I've said save attachments, we can say for each at in mi.attachments. I'll then give myself a couple of blank lines and say next at. And then inside this loop, rather than jumping straight to the saving part, let's make sure that we're actually referencing the attachments by debug.printing something. So I'm going to say debug.print then I'm going to just add a quick indent level to the debug.print statement. The simplest way I can think to do that is to just type in a comma. And then after that, I can say at.filename. Then I'm going to bring back the debug.print statement for the email file name. And I'll clear the contents of the immediate window and then run the subroutine again. And we should see this time that we get a list of all of the file names along with the attachments in those messages. The final step then is to add the code that will save each of these attachments in the appropriate folder. So again, just to help with that, I'm going to declare another variable to store the folder path for the attachments folder. So let's head up to the top and say something like dim attachments folder path as string. And then I can say attachments folder path equals this workbook.path and then concatenate to the end of that backslash attachments and an extra backslash. Okay, now that we've done that, we can scroll back down to our for each loop and just below this debug.print statement, let's say at.save, sorry, I'll spell save correctly, save as file followed by a space and we just need then to provide the path. So I'll concatenate attachment folder path and at.filename and that will be sufficient to save the file. I'm just going to comment out the debug.print statements and then just have a quick look to check that the attachments folder is indeed currently empty. But if we run this subroutine, we will see once it's finished 
Back in the attachments folder, we now have each of these files stored in the attachments folder. So there you go, there's the basics of saving attachments from emails saved in Windows folders. Hopefully that's enough to answer the original question, but if not, feel free to carry on asking more questions and I'll do my best to keep on answering them. Thanks very much for watching, we'll see you next time.